वेलकम यू ऑल टू पार्ट टू ऑफ न्यूक्लियर इन दिस सेशन वील बी स्टडिंग अबाउट न्यूक्लियर फोर्स न्यूक्लियस कंसिस्ट ऑफ प्रोटॉन्स एंड न्यूट्रॉन्स प्रोटॉन्स आर पॉजिटिवली चार्ज न्यूट्रॉन्स आर न्यूट्रली चार्ज इवन दो टू पॉजिटिवली चार्ज पार्टिकल्स आर प्रेजेंट इन साइड द न्यूक्लियस दे आर नॉट रिपलिंग Why they are not repelling? That is the question of today, and let us find the answer in this session. Okay, nuclear force. This is the force which is present inside the nucleus. What does it do? This force holds nucleus together in the nucleus, and how it holds, and what are the characteristics that we will be studying. The first thing, why they are not repelling? Because nuclear force is the strongest force in nature. Okay, let us understand about this. This is a nucleus. There are protons and protons. Actually, protons and protons are positively charged particles. They must repel by which force? Electrostatic force. But they are not repelling. Why? Let us find the answer now. This is a proton and this is a proton. They must repel with the force of electrostatic force. But inside the nucleus, there is another one force which attracts this proton and proton. And what is that force now? Nuclear force. And if we compare this. Two forces. I have written here. Nuclear force is hundred times greater than the electrostatic force. Means if this force is one newton, this force is hundred newtons. That's why they are not repelling. They are attracting here. And do remember, this is the strongest force in nature. Right? If we compare with the gravitation force, nuclear force is ten raised to thirty-eight times that of gravitation force. Do remember how much strong the nuclear force is. We have compared a strongest force as well as the weakest force in nature, and by this I can conclude that nuclear force is the strongest force in nature, right? And the second one is they are mainly an attractive force. We know that nature of force are of two types: attractive and repulsive. And nuclear force is mainly an attractive force. And how it is attractive? Let us understand. Nature of force depends upon the distance between the nucleons. If I am taking protons and neutrons, the distance is d, right? Inside the nucleus, nuclear force is attractive. But if the two nucleons become too close, it will not be attractive. It becomes repulsive. Too close means how much? Let us understand. Mainly attractive, but the distance is less than 0.8 Fermi. Fermi means you know it is 10 raised to minus 15 meters. If the distance is less than 0.8 Fermi, it becomes what we say again repulsive. Right? If there are two nucleons, they are attractive. They are attractive. If they become too close, they become repulsive. The too close is the range 0.8 for me. That's why I will not be calling nuclear force as attractive. I will be calling it as it is mainly an attractive force. So this is the second character. So let us go with third one. That is nuclear force is short range force. Right? Means it is about. I am speaking about the range. If there are two magnets, they will attract within a range. If you cross that range, the two magnets will not attract. Let me call it as it is a range of a magnetic force. In the similar manner, what should be the distance so that nuclear force exists? Do you remember the distance should be around three Fermi, right? It's too small. If the distance between the two nucleons is more than three Fermi, this nuclear force will never exist itself, right? Right? That's why the, if the distance crosses three Fermi, nuclear force does not exist. This is too much short. Let me call it as short range force. So nuclear force is a short range force. And let us go with the fourth one. Nuclear force inside the nucleus is charge independent. Means it does not depend upon the charge. Okay, let us check it out. What there are protons and protons. The force between proton and proton. The force between proton and neutron. And the force nuclear force between neutron and neutron. The force between these nucleons are the same. Means the force does not de depend upon the charge. So let me call it as charge. Independent and the fifth property is it is non-central. Means if there are two nucleons, the force does not exist between the line joining the two centers. Right, force between the two nucleons does not act along line joining their centers. That's why let me call it as non-central. So these are the, some of the characteristics of the nucleus. Right, you need to remember this thing. Okay, this is for explanation purpose. So you need you need to remember what is a nuclear force and what are its characteristics. Now let us move on to the next session. That is Einstein's mass-energy relation. Earlier, mass and energy were considered two different physical quantities, but Einstein combined them. According to Einstein, mass and energy are interconvertible. Means they can be converted from one form to another. Right? If there is something lost in energy, that must be how converted into mass. Right? If there is something lost in mass, that should be converted into energy. 
right okay now energy what is the energy equivalent to mass m if there is a substance called mass m how much is energy inside it now, right so if there is a loss of mass m how much it is converted into energy let us check it out that is the formula we will be writing that is e equal to mc square this is a famous einstein's equation and this relation is called as einstein's mass energy relation so what is e here it is not simply an energy it is energy equivalent to mass m and what is seen here it is speed of light in vacuum and the value is 3 to 10 raised to 8 unit of per second right so do remember this formula that is e equal to mc square okay now let us check it out if there is a loss of mass of 1 kg how much of energy is released let us check it out right so what is the energy equivalent to mass 1 kg right so let us use the equation e equal to mc square in place of m let us write 1 kg assign it to itself i will be using again so m is 1 kg let me write 1 kg c is again in assign it 3 to 10 raised to 8 square again if you calculate you will be getting the energy as 9 into 10 raised to 16 joules this is much a huge amount of energy is released by 1 kg itself right so what is the energy equivalent to mass 1 kg it is 9 into 10 raised to 16 do you understand right so joules this much of energy is released if, the, if there is loss of 1 kg of mass right so do remember if there is a loss of mass it should have been converted into energy so now you have understood how the energy is released in the nucleus now. okay so we'll be learning much more about that later okay now instead of calculating because we will be using we will not be using uh, kgs in the nuclear we will be using a m mu okay let us understand if there is a loss of mass of 1 a m u how much of energy is released that we will be calculating right okay what is the energy equivalent to mass 1 a m u right so e equal to mc square in mass i will be writing 1 a m u we have already studied that 1 a m u is equal to 1.66 into 10 raised to minus 27 kg okay so m i will be writing 1.6 it is 1 a m u c is 3 to 10 to 8 this square if we calculate this we will be getting with 14.94 into 10 raised to minus 11 joules but as energy kg was the large unit for mass here joule is also a large unit of energy we need to convert into electron volt so whenever we discuss in terms of uh, nucleus and in terms of atoms we will be using electron volt okay let us calculate now right so we know that uh, one electron volt is nothing but 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 joules and we need to convert joule into electron volt then what we need to do we need to divide it okay let us divide so this quantity divided by 1.6 into 10 raised to minus 19 that time the joule is converted into electron volt if we calculate there is no need to calculation if we calculate it will be nearly about uh, 931 into 10 raised to 6 electron volt 10 raised to 6 is mega so let me write it as 931 mega electron volt means if there is loss of 1 amu mass then how much of energy it is converted it is converted into 931 mega electron volt so do remember if there is one amu loss of mass it, it has been converted into 931 mega electron volt and this is all about einstein's mass energy relation now we will be studying about uh, two important concepts one is mass defect and another one is binding energy okay one thing is clear in the nucleus mass defect arises and what is the defect let us understand if i take two protons and two neutrons if i add these masses it is around 4 am mu but when i combine these constituents and make a nucleus then it will not be 4 am mu if i combine and if i take the mass of the nucleus it is around, it, it will be 3.99 am mu and there is difference in this mass and this defect is called as what is we call it as mass defect and this arises in every nucleus okay let us check it out this defect can be stated in this way it is the difference between masses of protons and neutrons forming the nucleus and the mass of the nucleus itself and that difference is called as mass defect what is the formula for it mass defect usually i write it in the in the form of delta m that is mass defect and mass of protons how many protons are there you know z number of protons are there what is the mass of each proton mp right plus how many neutrons are there a minus z neutrons are there and what is the mass of one neutron mn so let me write like this mass of protons plus mass, mass of neutrons minus what is the mass of the nucleus let me write it as capital letter m right if we uh, make the difference of these two we will be getting the mass defect 
right and this mass defector is responsible for the binding energy okay let us understand about this okay next session is about binding energy and binding energy is represented with eb this is the energy required to bind these nucleons to form a stable nucleus okay we need to bind these nucleons and form a stable nucleus and who will give that energy this is the mass defect will give that energy let us check it out it is the energy required to bind the nucleons to form stable nucleus and it is the same energy which is required to break the nucleus to into its constituents nucleons right okay so this is the energy required to bind the nucleons to form stable nucleus if uh, the, uh, what we say now mass defect is in kgs let me calculate you know if it is in kgs how much of uh, energy is released there right so it is given by the einstein's mass energy equation let us write if mass defect is in kg binding energy is eb what is the mass defect delta m is equal to kg energy, okay c square and this is expressed in terms of joules but i told you we will not be speaking in terms of kgs we will be speaking in terms of amu and we have already proved that that 1 amu is equal to 931 mev that time let us write if mass defect is in amu binding energy is eb is equal to delta m into 931 mev right so this mass defect is converted into what we say here binding energy and this binding energy arises due to what we say here mass defect that is how they are connected right in the next classes we will be studying about specific binding energy right thank you